A couple years ago, BMW was just so far ahead of everyone in electrification, and then they sort of fell behind. Until now! Today we have the BMW iX, and this thing is, well, the powertrain's really good at least. I wish I could say the rest is freaking sweet. Let's have a look. Why are you so loud? <laughs> the looks are a bit on the questionable side. In black, I think it looks pretty good. Any other color, and it's just absolutely terrible. Like here, it all looks great. In like a white one though, like this remains black, that remains black, down here remains black. Just get the black one. We also have the kidneys here. I kind of think it looks like someone's butt cheeks put up against a pane of glass. To each their own, I guess. Anyway, if you look really closely, there's some radar sensors that are integrated in here and it's pretty cool. We also have a BMW logo and if you push on it, that's where your windshield washer fluid goes. Nice. Although some of the design language and body lines might be a little bit on the questionable side as far as design goes, at least there's good engineering reason for it. The coefficient of drag of this thing is 0.25, which is freaking incredible. For reference, the X6 is 0.34. That's just so much highway efficiency that they've gained here. It's amazing how they've done that. One more thing though, the hood. Inside there's no obvious latch or anything, so I looked in the owner's manual and it just says, only openable by BMW servicemen. Uh, we're gonna see about that, one second. <laughs> I haven't actually done this yet, but apparently there's two little things that you can pull on each side to unlock it. Oh no, that's the whole panel that's coming off. I don't want to do that. Or do I? Uh, let's look on the other side, I guess. Oh, there's one. Okay. Oh, haha. Oh, heck yeah. I'm half curious if they did this just so they didn't have to, you know, install anything to hold your hood up. And the instructions that I saw, they recommend just putting an Allen key through this hole right here. Not a good start from a right to repair standpoint. It's bad BMW. Wow, oh, this thing's making some load of a racket for a car that's turned off. I'm guessing that it's the heat pump. So they've got this absolutely massive intercooler here. And it seems like that there's a pump that's right there that has to be the heat pump that's keeping everything cool, air conditioning, whatnot. Another reason they might not want you looking under here is look at the snakeage. They couldn't make this any nicer. <laughs> like this piece right here though, that is some solid reinforcement. I guess that's the crash structure. Probably a real safe one. So it's real heavy. I need to stop doing that. Along the side, first of all, we have this gold trim, which I think looks pretty good with the black as long as you're into fancy stuff. More interestingly though, the whole width of the top half of the car reduces as it goes along the length. This also helps you get that super low drag coefficient and also is very effective in having almost zero rear visibility. Around the back, the way that they've done the diffusion in these LEDs just looks so sick. Excellent job, BMW. As for the rest, it's pretty good, but again, it looks way better with the black paint compared to any other color. For the trunk, it opens up pretty normally and you can just stop it wherever. There's no sensors for the height. And if you go to set it here, you can go like that. And I bonked it off the ceiling of my car park. <laughs> As you can see, the high points right on the BMW logo. I'm sorry, Langley BMW. You are able to set the height that the lift gate opens to in the menu, but it's a lot less intuitive than just holding this for a couple seconds. Anyway, the trunk itself is pretty good. <laughs> the underfloor has heaps of room for all of your random crap that you have to keep in your car. The actual trunk is nice and big and you have these buttons right here. So you can put your seats down. It works really fast. What you can also see back here is just the massive amount of carbon fiber. You can see it alongside the doors as well. There's a whole carbon fiber roll hoop in this thing, which will be great if you flip it and also helps explain why it's so freaking expensive. Along this side, we have our charging ports, AC, DC. It's good for 200 kilowatts of fast charging. That gets you from, I think it's 20 to 80% in 30 minutes. Pretty good. Not as good as, you know, lots of other cars. To open the doors, you have to do kind of a up and in sort of thing. Pretty easy from the outside, actually. And in the back, there's another little switch here that puts your seats down. Awesome that it's easy from both sides. 
The rear seats are incredibly comfortable if you're very short. If you are not, then, uh, well, as you can see, my legs are just <laughs> up way too high. The floor in here, it's not low enough. I guess that helps out with the 500 kilometers of range. Other than that, it's a pretty nice spot to be, I do have to say. You have heaps of climate controls in here. Also have this weird put your jacket on it or put your iPad on it type thing. We also have two USB Type-C chargers and two cup holders. Oh, and no ski hatch. <laughs> Hopping into the driver's seat, this is where the big problems start to happen. Now, first of all, just opening the door. It's pretty easy, you push this button here, but your arm's at this like weird angle, so you sort of have to push the button and then either sort of like eh, force it at a weird angle with bad leverage, or you like press it and then push again up here. It's just a bad spot. BMW, please test these things. Above that, we have these crystal seat controls. They look really fancy and also uh, don't do everything that you need a seat control to do. For that, you press here, and then you get your C controls that you have to use the infotainment for. I had a similar thing in the Volvo, but this is just worse done in every single way. Why they are using like same icon for everything? In here, we also have massaging functionality. I can turn that on. It's uh, rather pleasant. I guess. I wouldn't use it too much after the gimmick wore off. Moving on though, the climate control menu makes all of the seat controls just downright the most intuitive thing ever. Like whoever decided that this is how you should have your climate control should be fired. Like actually, how is this acceptable at all? This is literally the most dog shit climate controls that's ever existed in a car ever. It's so bad. It, every single, like what do these icons mean? I don't know. It's overwhelming when you look at it and then you can use like their little control thingy but then you have to go to each one and individually select it like eh, abominable on top of that if you like turn on let's say your seat heating oh the icon didn't turn up great there we go your seat ventilation an icon pops up here let's go back we're doing whatever with media and crap and you want your seat ventilation turned on we click this. No, it just takes you back to this menu. Instead of, you know, everything else, you'd be able to just change it from right here. It also goes away. I would love it if I could just press right there, have my seat heater turn on, turn off. Nope, they don't do it. Anyway, the rest of the menu's also <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. If you need to have a search at the top of your menu, you have done it wrong. There's so much stuff in here. I don't use any of it. The saving grace of all of this is down here. They at least have most of the stuff that you need easily accessible down here. It's a wooden touch thing. It's all pretty simple to use and works pretty well. We also have this incredibly fancy crystal little, what is this, M-Box knob? I don't care. The rotate feels incredibly nice. The detent's good, but it's a little bit too loose compared to going from side to side. Now you might think you could just ignore this knob and operate everything by touch, but it's all a bit of a reach and I have very long arms. BMW, I did a whole video on all of the stuff that you've done in order to like prototype your new vehicles. How did you land on this? How did you test it? And think, huh, this is better. Nope. It's not, it's terrible. It's complete garbage. But anyway, you'll just use Android Auto. It works really poorly with the little knobby thingy here, but whatever, you'll get used to it. This one feature requires my scroll of knowledge. Up above us, we have Electrochromic glass. So this basically is like a sandwich structure. So you have your polymer dispersed liquid crystals in between two pieces of glass. It acts very similar to how your TV works, but instead of, you know, a backlight, it's the sunroof in this. So how it works here when it's off and no voltage is applied, all of the crystals that are in your little sandwich there are orientated any which way. So the light comes in and it hits it and it just kind of bounces off. The whole thing appears opaque. Um, ugh. Then once you turn it on, all of the liquid crystals align and the light can go right through. And then your sunroof is nice and transparent. That's cool. Um, it's completely a gimmick. It's not very functional, but science. Let's drive it. That's good at least. <laughs> oh, here we go. Wait, no, I have to tell you about our sponsor. Thanks to Vessi Footwear for sponsoring today's video. Vessi Footwear is known for being lightweight, comfortable, easy to pack, and most importantly, water resistant with its Dymatex technology. Their everyday move lineup is made to keep up with your active lifestyle with its added support in the midsole and better breathability. It also has a pull tab to take them on and off with ease, and it's made creature free. I think they mean like animals, so you can take each step guilt free. You want to wear them everywhere, so keep your feet dry and save $25 with offer code shortcircuit at vessi.com shortcircuit. 
grab she's fast. Real fast one here. 523 horsepower, 560 uh, some foot pounds of torque. There's a lot of torque here. Like if you're just going along, you know, you can just be like, boom. Oh my God. Electric is just so incredible. No gasoline engine can do that. It's just like, bam. One thing that you should note is that you uh, can't adjust where the headrest is and there's a little plastic bit right here. So if you have a shorter passenger like my missus was, maybe don't do that because their head can hit on the plastic thing. It hurts a lot. I need my headphone back. <laughs> <laughs> Once you've done the launch a couple of times, you're gonna get tired of that and wanna go in here. And now we've got personal mode here, which uh, you might think you could adjust. Uh, nope, efficient mode, nope. So the only mode that you can do anything in is sport mode, which means that you can turn sport mode into a not quite sporty sorta comfort mode, but then you lose your sport mode. So uh, just give me an individual mode, BMW. Why the hell is personal mode not personalizable? It's so stupid. Anyway, once you get it into personal mode, the whole thing softens up and the ability for this thing to just eat up bumps is excellent. Now, this also means that uh, even in sport mode, it's not that good in the corners, but just the amount of body roll that you get is a little bit excessive. It really dips and dives into the corners. The steering also just doesn't inspire a whole lot of confidence for me for whatever reason. It's good right here, but in sort of like the middle bit from sort of here to there, there's just not a whole lot of feedback and I can find that I'd sort of drift around accidentally when I don't mean to. I kind of wish there was a bit more centering, but then again, centering normally feels weird. Oh, it, it just feels a little bit weird. Also, one fun thing that they've done is make a hexagonal steering wheel. It gets kind of weird to hit your turn signal because when you're on like, you know, the pointy bits, your hand's a bit far away from it. I don't think that drivers of this use their turn signals anyway, but if you are the sort of person that turn signals, it's annoying to use because of this. Here you have the iconic sounds. Apparently it was designed by Han Zimmer and we can, uh, yeah, we'll just turn that back off. I think it's dumb. Nitpicking aside though, the suspension setup in this thing is fantastic. We have the adjustable dampers and the air suspension package, so you can't adjust the height, but like this thing just eats up the road. Like you can go over so many bumps. Like this is a kind of bumpy road that we're on right now. Couldn't tell. The comfort of this thing is exceptional and it does that without bouncing and having sort of weird unsettling of the chassis. It's really, really well set up. It also somehow masks the fact that this is 5,500 pounds of car. This thing is so heavy and you don't have that like super stiffness like you have in a lot of electric cars. Along with the excellent driving dynamics, the driver assists in this are just awesome. I have without a doubt used the lane centering in this more than any other car that I've used before. The way that it's able to just not only hold you in the lane, but dip into corners in a way that inspires confidence I have not experienced in any other vehicle. The one not quite as good spot is if you're coming up on a car that's stopped at a light. It does stop you and it stops you fairly smoothly, but it does it way too late. It's breaking like, you know that person where like you look at their car and their front wheels are just caked in brake dust? Yep, that's me. It breaks like that person. Like you're just coming up on there, you're like, are you gonna stop? Are you gonna stop? Are you gonna stop? Okay, okay, we're stopping. Sounds like a BMW driver. Yep, sounds like a BMW driver. Now one bit of a brown stain on this car is the audio setup. We have the base spec Harman Kardon stereo and it's just not all that good. At lower levels, like we're listening to right now, it's acceptable, but once you push it up a little bit, ugh, there must be a whole bunch of distortion or something. It hurts my ears, even at not very loud levels. It's, it's just not very good. The clarity's not there. For $5,000, you are able to get a Bowers and Wilkins upgrade, and if that's anything like the system that we had in the Volvo S90, get that. This Harman Kardon one is not acceptable in a car that's $40,000, let alone one that's 100. Like, just listen to this, Andy. It feels so dry. Ugh. I had a similar thing where my ears would start hurting in my Golf when I first got it, and I was able to solve that with just heaps of Dynamat. Not acceptable that you have to Dynamat a car that's this expensive. <laughs> so the price. This one right here comes in at $112,000 Canadian. And what do you get for that? Oh, oh. Oh, my head. You get 
that powertrain, that immediate torque, but at the same time, the suspension that's able to keep up with all of the mass the battery is at. And they do add a lot. Again, 500 kilometers of range. I have had no trouble at all. You can go a day or two without charging it and your commute's not going to be affected. Overall, I'm kind of able to ignore how just complete dog shit the infotainment is because you can kind of just go in there, have a terrible day or two setting everything up. Once it's set up, everything that you need is down in this area and you'll just use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. So then, should you buy one? <laughs> like you can. Jeez, even if you have the money, Apparently at Langley BMW, they have what, 150 people in lineup? No, no 170. 170 people in lineup. They aren't going to be taking deliveries until like 2024, geez. <laughs> if you're not already on the list, you're fucked. <laughs> so huge thanks to BMW Langley for giving this vehicle. If you guys could give us the i4, I would very much appreciate that. I'll be less mad about the whole infotainment thing because I've already had my rant about it. We'll just drive it.